I am not afraid of tomorrow, for I have seen yesterday and I love today. William Allen White Growing up, I had a fear of failure. With too much pressure, responsibilities, and high expectations, I was always in a constant distress. But throughout my life, I learned that fear will get me nowhere and by not giving in to my fear, I will be able to achieve anything I want. I can finally remember the good memories, cherish what is present, and be excited about the future. This is my last lecture. In November 29, 1996, my parents first met through a blind date that was arranged by a pastor they both knew. After a month, my dad proposed my mom in December 24, 1996 and got married in May 17, 1997. On August 19, 1998, my one and only sister, Olivia, was born. And after three years and three months, in November 19, 2001, 11.38 p.m., I was born. For the next five years of my life, my family lived in Dongimun to be right next to my grandma because my mom needed her assistant raising me and my sister. Even though it's unclear, spending time with my grandparents was one of my favorite memories I've ever had. Life in my grandma's house was very pleasant. I was carefree without any worries or stress. All I really needed to do was to have fun and be happy. However, my parents soon found a house to move to and back then, I was really sad because that meant I won't see my grandma as often. I made so many good memories in Dongnimun as a child that, in fact, I know for sure that when I go back, I will know that's where I belong. Once we settled into our new house located in Jeongneung, I was sent to school for the first time. Even though I cried the first day of kindergarten, I began to like my environment, my teachers, and my friends. I was a hard worker in school, I never gave up, no matter how hard or overwhelming the studies were, which was the only reason why I could be academically successful. I made so many good friends and met so many people that I'm proud to be close with, and I was happier than I was ever before. But as soon as I thought I was happy, my dad was called to the United States from his company, so we had to move to New York. Instead of Manhattan, I lived in a small town named Little Neck located in Queens. Because I couldn't speak English, I had a hard time communicating and understanding others. I could only communicate fluently with three kids in my elementary who also spoke Korean. Because of the discrimination that I had to face, I was traumatized and started not to trust in others which made me more reserved, isolated from others. Though there were times I wanted to just give up, I always picked myself up to constantly practice English and try my best at all times. At the end of my 5th grade, my dad received another message that he has to go to California and help a branch out, so we moved once again in the summer of 2013 to California. Trying to make new friends for the third time wasn't so easy, especially with the state of mind that New York has left me with. Nevertheless, I knew that it was a new beginning that God gifted me, so I tried my best to take advantage of it. I've met so many people that influenced and guided me when I was lost and confused, and Daniel, my best friend, teacher, and mentor was one of them. Daniel helped me to be passionate and confident in myself by being an example. Till this day, he is one of my role models who challenged me to always be better than who I was before. I've gone through so many stages of change in California that I can say this is where I was able to fully develop as who I am right now. Like 
I'm an overly optimistic person. I laugh off my problems and move on with my day. However, I can't always deal with my problems on my own, and that's where all my friends come into place. Your coach is gone. <laughs> oh, it's all right? No, it's so, so you use the hermit to figure out. Oh, I mean, yeah. My friends were a source of joy. They made me laugh and allowed me to have someone to joke around with. Also, I always shared my struggles and hardships with my friends so they can empathize and comfort me. Without them, it would have been so easy to just rot inside without anyone knowing. <laughs> Along with my friends, my family stayed with me at all times. Honestly speaking, I still don't get how my family is always so joyful and peaceful because we're so different in so many ways. But they all contributed to growing me and making me a better person. My dad taught me how to be someone who can think of others before myself. <laughs> my mom taught me how to show genuine care and love even for my enemies. <laughs> Finally, my sister taught me how to be independent and determined for the future. My parents were always there to support me, and I know for sure that they will always be there for me until the day I die. Never give up because that's the only way you can find out whether you can or cannot overcome. Even for me, though it seemed impossible to overcome, I proved myself wrong by just pushing through my bad days. The past 16 years was a rough ride for my family. However, only because we never gave up trying, we can stand where we are right now and have the same relationship that we had before.